Hi everybody, this is Maury Nucciatelli, AKA the Mixology Diva. I'm glad you could join me tonight. I'm here to teach you some bartending basics and some, maybe some insider tricks and tips on how to make some fabulous cocktails. Um, if any of you <laughs> tuned in last week, we reviewed, um, let's review some of those basics that we went over. Um, we went over glassware. Today, uh, you'll see a lot of times um, up cocktails, martinis in the classic martini cocktail glass and in coupes. And they look really beautiful. I have a soft spot for vintage coupes and apparently it was the perfect size of Marie Antoinette's um, bust. And I just want to thank those of you who gave me some feedback. Apparently, it's not flattering for a woman my age to have a camera shooting up. So change that. And we're going to try not to re go over too, too much stuff. And we're going to keep it on 30 minutes. Um, I just want to say hi to all my peeps watching. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. My number one fan. We also talked about last week, two different kinds of shakers. The cobbler is the classic at-home bartender shaker. It's great, it's got a strainer built right in. You folks, if that's what you're using, just keep on keeping on with that. Most professional bartenders use a Boston shaker, and this is used to shake any cocktail that has a mixer. If it has only booze, it like say for instance, a Manhattan or a martini, it is supposed to be just stirred. Okay, and we made a Manhattan last week, which was um, really great. Some other glassware, your classic rocks glass, your double old fashioned, and um, these are really fun to put drinks in. I also said, please use clean eyes, change that filter. And I made um, a special cube for those of you who just like your bourbon or your scotch on the rocks, the large cube is really great for not diluting that, okay? All right, and we also talked about making some simple syrup, and this is a classic um, ingredient whenever you're making a sour mix. Um, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water in a saucepan. Turn on the heat. As soon as it dissolves and it's clear, you're done. Okay, we'll put that aside. I've already made mine. Um, I also suggested using these pour caps when you're making a bunch of drinks. We, when we made a Manhattan, we talked about using a good quality sweet vermouth. We um, used Dolan last week. We talked about the difference between bourbon and rye and blended whiskeys. Um, so tonight, I wanted to make two drinks and one of them is all booze, so we're going to what? We're going to stir it. And the other drink is a uh, variation on a sidecar. And a side classic sidecar is brandy, triple sec, or Cointreau, either or. And it's um, lemon sour mix. It's shaken, served straight up with the sugar rim. But what I came up with, giving um, Autumn and all the apples, we're going to make it with instead of brandy, apple brandy, known as Calvados, okay? So the orange liqueur can either be Cointreau or triple sec. We're gonna make fresh sour mix. We're gonna squeeze our lemons. I showed you how to do this last week. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna put a little bit of simple syrup and the little fun ingredient to make it very seasonal also is fresh apple cider. All right, so we're gonna use clean ice in our Boston shaker, okay? Clean ice, Boston shaker. Now, the recipe I also suggested, instead of using a jigger, to use these little cool measuring cups where you so easily see a half ounce, one ounce, three quarter of an ounce, okay? 
I'm going to use the clear one tonight. So look how easy that is to see. Two ounces of Calvados. We're going to pour that right into the Boston shaker. I am just going to use triple sec. If you have Cointreau, use the Cointreau. We're going to do about a half ounce of the Cointreau. And we're going to make our lemon sour mix. So remember I showed you um, cutting off the little nipples on either end of the lemon. Cut it in half. Take our handy dandy squeezer. It's better to do this over a larger um, or dish. And there's a strainer built in, so hopefully the seeds. So we're gonna do one and a half ounces. Yeah, short a little bit. Of fresh lemon juice. Okay. And I am one for using uh, strictly fresh, fresh, fresh ingredients. Now we're gonna do, I've already pre-made my simple syrup. We're gonna do, Let's say a half ounce. Now, if you have a sweet tooth, you can go a little heavier on this. I am just going to use a half ounce, and then we're going to get our fresh apple cider and do one ounce. Okay? Everything is in there. Now, if you remember last week, how I taught you to shake, this is goes in at an angle. Tap the top. <laughs> okay? Now, as you can see, there's an opening. There's a wide opening, there's no opening, and then there's a medium opening. That's where you tap it to release it. That's the insider trick tonight, okay? Okay, now you want some sort of martini or up glass or coupe. I'm going to go with this pretty little one, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a little uh, classic sidecar gets a sugar rim. So I make sugar and cinnamon. You just take, you can even use that spent lemon. You just want to put a little citrus on the rim so the sugar cinnamon mixture will adhere. Try not to get seeds in there. Just swirl in the glass. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it? Now, we're going to use the Hawthorne shaker <laughs> strainer. And we're just going to. Oh, man. That not a good drink. Very good looking. I'm going to taste it for you just to make sure it's okay. Mmm. Mm. That would be good around the fire pit, Sarah. Mm. All right. For those of you, sorry. Uh, for those of you who like it a little bit sweeter, I don't like sweet drinks. You can put in more than a half an ounce of the simple syrup. So we'll review the ingredients. Two ounces of the Calvados brandy. So it's uh, apple brandy. We did a half ounce of triple sec or Cointreau, whatever you have on hand. We did one ounce of apple cider. We did one and a half ounces of fresh lemon juice and a half ounce of simple syrup. But if you like it a little sweeter, you go up to three quarters of an ounce, okay? We used the Boston shaker. We shook it. We use the Hawthorne strainer. Believe it or not, when you're making a um, Manhattan, a martini, the all booze kind of cocktail, a lot of times they recommend the julep strainer. Hey, do you want to make one of those drinks? Let's do it. So the other drink I wanted to make is a Boulevardier. So, a lot of you know what a Negroni is. A Negroni is gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. A Boulevardier, so it's Boulevard with I-E-R on the end. You sub in whiskey, which can be bourbon in this case, instead of the gin. Let me just rinse my shaker. 
And um, everybody between cocktails should be rinsing their shaker. Okay? So the classic measurements are one and a half ounce of whiskey, three quarters of an ounce of Campari, and three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. And last week, we talked about using a good quality sweet vermouth. I am not a fan of the Martini and Rossi. I do like the Dolan. You could also really make it nice with the Rosso Antico. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm also gonna rinse my measures. All right, so we're gonna go for Last session, we talked about whiskeys, bourbon, in order to be a bourbon, it has to have at least 51% corn. And that, of course, makes it a little sweeter than a rye or a blended whiskey. And of course, rye whiskey, it's gotta be at least 51% rye, a little bit drier. But bourbon's fine, bourbon's great. Back my southern ladies, just love it. Okay, we're gonna do one and a half ounce of the bourbon three quarters of an ounce of the sweet vermouth. And by the way, you can put your ice in before or after. Now, I'm gonna throw a little trick at you. Most people in a Bavardier or a Negroni use Campari. And I like Campari, but there's something I like better. And it's called Aperol. It's a similar liqueur. It's um, bitter liqueur. It's from Italy. It's delightful. So we're gonna go ahead and do three quarters of an ounce of the Aperol. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and add our ice. What do we know about this drink? It's all booze, correct? So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna shake it? Mm, really shouldn't. We should be stirring this. And I, over the years, have discovered many um, people do like their Manhattans, their Martinis, their Rob Roy's, their Negroni's, their Boulevardia's shaken because they like when the ice splinters and leaves little shavings on the top of the drink. And that's fine. <laughs> you just wanna accommodate people and have a drink that they like, right? But classically, this is how it should be made. I'm making a mess here. This bar needs to be wiped down. Who the heck is running this place anyway? All right, there we go. Now, you could go, you could go with a coupe for this drink or a martini, whatever you have on hand. Once again, I am just such a sucker for these old vintage coupes. So um, I might go with that. All right. And once, if you got the right twirl down, it should be the um, bar spoon should be loose in your fingers and you should just twirl away, okay? Now, you probably don't have it, so you could use either or, but classically a um, stirred drink should use a julep strainer, but if the Hawthorne is the only one you have, by all means, use it. Um, so this is a really nice drink for people who like whiskey but want don't want to just drink straight whiskey or bourbon. Um, and what I like in this, it's recommended a lemon twist, but I like a lot of orange twist. So last week I taught you how to make a twist. I'm gonna show it to you again. Use a good, sharp vegetable peeler. Peel a piece, and this even when you're doing a lemon, um, so about a size of a Band-Aid, okay? Now, this is a side with the oil. 
this is the white pith that's bitter. So we want this side, we want to crack it horizontally to release the oils. Then you take the oil colored side and you just go around the rim. Okay. And actually I'm going to float it the other way. All right. Once again, let me taste this for you. Mm. Love that. I love bitters, Aperol, all those kind of things. Mm. Delightful. These are really nice drinks for the fall. So we have the Calvados Sidecar. And if you want to get fancy schmancy, we could also put a um, lemon peel in that drink. Or, hey, do any of you have some um, dehydrated apple slices maybe? I know a lot of people eat um, dried fruit like with their nuts for snacks. That would be a really cool garnish. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to make a lemon twist here out of a spent lemon. And I'm just cutting off. All right. So I cut off all the pulp. And once again, when you twist, you want this part to squeeze um, the lemon oil or the orange oil. All right, so let's review our two drinks. We have a Calvados sidecar, and that is with Calvados brandy, orange liqueur, apple cider, fresh lemon sour mix, a little bit of simple syrup. We shook it, we strained it, we made a nice little sugar cinnamon uh, mix. We rimmed it and we served it in this nice coupe, the Boulevardier. We did bourbon, one and a half ounce, and then the sweet vermouth and the Aperol or Campari is three quarters ounce each. We stirred it, we strained it, we put a nice orange twist in it. Voila. I did want to show you this one thing. Um, for those of you who just like your bourbon or your scotch or whatever, neat. There are um, these nice silicone ice cube makers um, that make large rocks. So sometimes I will serve some of my specialty drinks made with whiskeys and whatnot over one rock so as not to dilute the drink too much. All right, so we have gone over a bit today. I wish this were interactive <laughs> so I could hear your questions. Last week, we talked about a whiskey sour and we made it with fresh lemon juice and simple syrup. And I did say you could also add a touch of dried egg white powder to froth it up a little bit. And I just want to tell you, I tried it out last night. You can do this with any sour mix. So we did two ounces of our booze. That could be two ounces of bourbon, two ounces of vodka, two ounces of gin. Then we did one ounce of French, fresh lemon juice and one ounce of the simple syrup. We put it in the Boston shaker, we shook it, and we served it in a um, double rocks glass, double old fashioned. But if you like the frothy head, a half teaspoon of egg white powder, and it looks like this, just a half teaspoon, put it in your shaker, Shake it, shake it, shake it. And when you pour the drink, you'll have a little bit of a nice foamy head. Now, um, some old school bartenders or craft cocktail bartenders are using raw, fresh egg whites. Um, uh, 
you really got to be careful with that. So that why, why, you know, you can just go get this. It's actually probably in the health food section because people put this in their um, smoothies and that sort of thing. Uh, what else can I share with you? Um, the, oh, I just wanted to tell you, these little measuring cups, they're in the kitchenware department at anywhere, Crate and Barrel, um, TJ Maxx. What I like about them, I don't know if you can see that, you can't mess up measuring because the measurement is at a slant, so you can see so clearly how to measure your drinks. And um, another tool we went over, there's a million of these. A lot of times you'll see these as wooden ones. I'm one of those people that likes things to be sanitized. So I actually like um, stainless steel ones. I have several of these and um, they're great to have on hand. And you know what? We can make it short and sweet tonight. I once, um, I wish we, had this as an interactive thing so I could, you know, if anybody had questions, we could uh, talk about it. <laughs> but just showing you the basics, showing you how to make drinks correctly, showing you, like now if you do go out to a bar and you see a bartender struggle with trying to release this, now you know. Man, they're hitting it in the wrong section, okay? Because it's, it's, it's science, I don't know. And it's so much fun making drinks. And I'm gonna try to do um, at least one or two drinks, probably two drinks, every Thursday, and go over some basic cocktail preparation techniques, learning how to make drinks correctly, once you get the basic sound, and if any of you are cooks, you know this, you just um, ad lib after that, and you know your palate, what you like, you know. I like things tart and bitter, so I'm gonna cut back on sweeteners. If you like things sweet, you're gonna add a little more um, simple syrup, or whatever the sweetener is. By the way, I also wanna say, this classic preparation, you make your simple syrup. After that, you can make so many types of syrups. I, oh, let me see which ones I have right now. I have two. I made a ginger simple syrup, so I peeled and cut up uh, little medallions of ginger, and I made a ginger simple syrup. So I think maybe next week we'll do the ginger lemon martini. This one, um, late summer, early fall, rosemary. So in the summer, I am famous for going out into my herb garden, um, adding in uh, lemon verbena or rosemary or thyme um, you, and just having a whole uh, slew of these herbal infused simple syrups, muddle some cucumber, throw in vodka or gin, the herbal infused simple syrups, citrus, either lemon or lime, shake, top with seltzer. How can you go wrong with those drinks? Uh, and then in the winter, as we segue into winter, we'll be getting into the winter um, palette of those spices like cinnamon, cardamom, um, those kind of deeper, warmer flavors. So I try to keep my drinks seasonally appropriate. Uh, last week we made the uh, Cape Cod Mule. Um, for those of you who weren't there last week, it is my own drink. Triple uh, Eight infused cranberry vodka. Now, Triple Eight Distillery uses real fruit for their infused vodkas. Um, so it's Cape Cod cranberries and it's a beautiful, gorgeous, cranberry hued vodka, really good quality ginger beer, and a big, nice slice of fresh orange. How can you go wrong with that drink? Um, both the sidecar and the Cape Cod Mule would be awesome at Thanksgiving. Um, 
I want to keep this short and sweet. I know you folks need to get your drinks made and maybe watch a debate or not. And I hope you leave comments for me. So as each week goes by, you know, comes and goes, I'm like, oh, somebody asked for blah, blah, blah. And I'll try to remember to um, address the question or how to do the technique or, you know, ideas on how to use that esoteric liqueur in the back of the liquor cabinet. Because we all have those crazy liqueurs in the back of the liquor cabinet. So I will do my best to come up with some concoctions. But once again, I do like to keep all my drinks um, seasonally appropriate. Um, today did feel a little summery. I got a little paddle boarding in today, so that was awesome. And I did swim outside yesterday. But um, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. And thank you again, Sarah O'Neill, for helping me get this going. And I just want to say cheers to all of you. And I will see you next time. Make it more drinks.